Doesn't feel super safe. Should we go all the way to the top? Yeah. Okay. All right. Safe. Safe up here. Good morning, John. Good morning, Hank! Well, that was the most elaborate one so far. Really, we had like nails and we could put it there permanently. Oh, don't right? worry. He'll be, he'll be there in the background. You got a plan? His I got massive a plan. forehead can hold him in place. Well, hello, Hank. Hi. Happy last day of pizza. It's greetings from the treehouse. We decided to do it in a treehouse. Yeah. Because that was an option. We never had a treehouse growing up. We did. We had a fort. We had a fort. It wasn't in a tree, but it was this. It was literally just this, but without the tree wrapped That's right. around. Yeah, it was a great place to get up to mischief. I got yeah. grounded from that fort. Did you? From throwing bottles off of it. Oh, that's not cool. Yeah. I remember doing one of my elementary school science fairs from that fort where I <laughs> counted the number of people who drove past. Nice. Wearing seat belts. Nice. That's good. Was, that's great. Even back then, I was a big fan of government regulation. Science. Can we? That's not going to make it in the video, is it? I think it may. Hank wants to get the light off my face, so we're doing this. <laughs> He's going to be like that, and I'm going to be like this. I always wanted we, to. He always criticizes boy. me for not wearing a hat. Yeah. So here I am. So earlier today, Hank and I went to an art gallery where we saw this amazing art made entirely out of like dandelions or daffodils or else iron oxide paints and then we went to the IMA and saw a cool fashion show. We did. It was great. It's been a good day. And now we're in a treehouse. John took my phone and gave me and like took video so maybe I will have put video over that. I'm just trying to get some kind of b-roll situation so that we don't have to see me wearing this hat. You can take the hat off. Then I'm all blown out which is what you're worried it's about. True. Well I was thinking you could just move a little. That was on Happy me. last day of pizza miss everybody. <laughs> I am transcending. So listen Hank's been raptured. It's more going to be a vlog brother situation. <laughs> Sorry about the wind noise. It's just Hank's getting raptured. The rapture. I want to do something different, something we've never done on the Bog Brothers channel before. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to understand after, where the sun is. After so long, it's the big bright thing in the sky. It's really weird that there's some, maybe something that we've never done before. Yeah. Here's what it is. Yeah. It's an educational video uh -huh. with both of us oh. in it. What are we educating on? I'm educating you on planets. I heard there are eight of them. They don't exist. What? This is like yesterday when you told me that we don't know what light is. I don't, this is not going to be good for me. That was what the Nobel Prize in Physics in part was about how we don't know what light is or even reality. But we're not going to talk about that. Wait, what? <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. So we don't know why there's matter in the universe. We don't know what light is and we don't know what's real and we don't really know whether time is real. In fact, and also it seems like the universe is actually two dimensional and the third dimension that we experience as space is a kind of is a different kind of dimension which is really throwing me for a loop. But I'm doing it's, it. I know. I'm, I know. I hear you. I'm, I'm moving around I in it right you. now. Look at me. I, look at three dimensional. Wait. I'm not three-dimensional to them. We were in that pizza... We, pizza? That gallery? We were in that gallery from the Sprouse guy. What was his name? Something Sprouse? Cole Sprouse? Nope, Dylan that's Sprouse? a different Sprouse. Those are the Sprouse brothers. Steven Sprouse? Psst, couldn't tell ya. That, the, the fashion designer? Yeah. Yeah. Steven, <laughs> Steven Sprouse. Steven Sprouse. <laughs> we were in the Steven Sprouse gallery and we were walking around and looking at all these, like, his whole sort of decades of work. And then uh, Catherine came up to me and I said, someday, It'll be like this, but just Pizza John's. <laughs> Nothing says future museum fashion show there's quite a, like Pizza John's. There's a lot of good Pizza John art over there, the it's years. It's true. It's true. And the, so who knows? Yeah, you're right. It we should happen. have. We should start a Pizza John gallery. Yeah. It'd be hard to get all of them together. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. We don't know what light is. We don't know what time is. We don't know what reality is. But planets aren't real. Planets are real. Obviously, planets are real in a I way that any them. anything is. But the idea of planets isn't a true category. Well, I would argue that very few categories are true categories That's, because there yes. is this weird non-one-to-one -one relationship between reality and language. By the way, I'm the only one who has a face according to the camera, so yeah. Hank may be out of focus. And this was my idea to film in the treehouse, so I am paying paying for it. Is that the only thing you wanted to teach me? No. I, there are things that do have true categories. Like protons are protons. Mm -hmm. Electrons are electrons. Mm -hmm. I think, and people will argue me, with me about it, but that life is a true category. Close. Planets as they are defined now, when we redefined them and it excluded Pluto, uh, and, and that's sort of a very contentious thing, and people get upset about it, but they, the reason I'm not upset about it is because I don't think that planets exist. And I think that most people would agree 
that planets don't exist. And I'd like to explain to you some ways in which planets don't exist. Okay. The current set of categories that we use is it has to be a, like, has to have formed itself into a sphere, which they call hydrostatic equilibrium. Pluto is, is a sphere, so is Ceres, and yeah. so are lots of moons. But then another one is that it has to have cleared its orbit, so it has to be big enough that, like, the, the area that it travels, it sucked up all the stuff in that orbit. And that is just a category we decided in order to uh, make, it, make it feel like there is a thing called a planet and draw a line that works in our solar system, but there's gonna be fuzzy parts in other solar systems. Let me right. tell you another way I'm not convinced planets exist. Right. I'm not convinced that Mercury has more in common with Jupiter than Mercury has in common with like Europa. Absolutely, this is one of my, so I think that a very clear distinction in our solar system is the difference between a gas giant and a terrestrial planet. That seems like a way bigger deal. That is right. one of that is one of my arguments for why planets don't exist. Because why would you put those two things in one category? <laughs> like it's trying to get me. <laughs> Just put it on. Put it on. It's great. Right, it's right. great. It's what a great bit. Another thing is that uh, Jupiter in particular has these four very large moons. One yeah. of them being larger than Mercury. So it's not it's certainly not size that makes a thing a planet. But oh, those moons those are things. going around Jupiter, not around a star. They're, you're right, and that's so that's like the final thing. But if Jupiter were ten times bigger, it would be a star. Wait, so there's no difference between Jupiter and a star except for size? Yep. So imagine that world where Jupiter is ten times bigger. All those moons are now planets. It just happened. Nothing changed about them. Mmm. But mm. they are now planets just because the thing that they are orbiting happened to be more massive. I think it's really weird that we're filming this one of our first videos ever that's in the sun. Like, I have a so really direct sun. view of the sunlight, <laughs> and I'm suddenly aware of the fact that I'm only here because there is a, like, right. source of eternal, not quite eternal, unfortunately, mm -hmm. light shining down upon this planet that has made all of this possible. But it's also, like, the one thing I can't look at. <laughs> So metaphorically resident. Yeah. yeah. The thing that makes me possible is the thing that... It's the only thing in our natural lives that we can't look at. Can we move to the other side of the tree? No. No. <laughs> so The video no. is so bad. This is the bit now. This is the th you. The, you the metaphor like, is occurring. You were like, man, I really need to be in the treehouse. I thought for it this would be cute, to work. not ugly. We're gonna try it. I bet you're right. I bet it's just gonna be the exact same problem. This would be the worst way for us to go, especially when we both die. Yeah. Well, I mean, that way at least we don't have to decide what to do when the other one dies. As I said, it is no better over here. It's really not. It might be worse. There's so much tree There's around, though. Light, the visible reminder of the invisible light <laughs> shining down upon us all the time. Maybe if I get in your shadow. And then another way in which planets don't exist is sometimes a thing that is definitely a planet gets ejected from the solar system and has no star anymore. <laughs> it could be a gas giant, it could be a terrestrial planet, but mm. nobody would say that it's not a planet. One of my all-time favorite memories is one time we were talking about that phenomenon where a planet gets ejected out from a solar system and then the planet is just like hurling through the vacuum of space for... No, yeah, there's no daytime, no nighttime, it's always dark on the planet. And you were like, well, there would be no light, so there would probably be no life. And then you paused and said, unless they made their own light. And I think about that all the time. I think phosphorescence is one of the coolest things that we do because the, the idea of making our own light is so beautiful. Like, the idea of storing the sun's light in some indirect way and then using it to create our own light like fireflies do or anglerfish or whatever. Or humans do. Oh yeah, we do it too. We can actually make something brighter than the sun, which doesn't, had never happened on Earth until us. We did it, Joe. <laughs> John has a hard time saying we did it without saying Joe afterwards. It's true, I can't. It's something I can't. I've noticed. I, can't, I cannot it's celebrate. I cannot <laughs> celebrate any kind of victory because then I have to say we did it and then I have to pause for three seconds and say, Joe, you're going to be the next president of the United States. <laughs> and I'm going to do that like in 30 years when yeah. people are like, I don't Why understand the reference. the reference. I remember playing Trivial Pursuit with our parents when we were, you know, teens, yeah. and they would always know the vice president, like, of the, right. of the, Spe Spiro Agnew. Agnew. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, how do you know that? And I'm like, of course. Like, I know all right. of the vice presidents I know Dan Quayle. I've been alive. Dan Quayle is yeah, sure. just barely a vice president, right? Also like, I mean, just barely still being held onto by public knowledge. 
Oh yeah, he's on. No, nothing personal, Dan. I know you're a fan of the of the vlog, but uh, yeah, he's barely hanging on. He's an Indiana boy, right? Some would hope a future resident of Crown Hill Cemetery. Well, I'm glad that you're looking out for Crown Hill, John. I thought about writing him a letter you saying, should. saying, I know you live in Arizona now, Dan, but have you considered? <laughs> this is a great format. I think the gr the great part is that you can see certain parts of our faces, and I explain to you why planets don't exist. And in a similar way. Pizza also definitely doesn't exist. And this, we get in these arguments about whether a hot dog is a sandwich, about whether the ocean is soup, about whether a calzone is pizza. Eh. Pizza doesn't exist. Soups don't exist. The ocean kind of also doesn't exist. Where's the line? There's all that brackish water. Estuarian. Almost everything that we think of as dichotomous is in fact spectral. Yeah. I don't like definitions that are just lists of... of categories or lists of yeah. like like ways to include and exclude certain things. Right. But that's a lot of the only way to do it. Yeah. And I, you see a lot of talk about like how fish don't exist. They don't. And how trees don't exist. Yeah, they don't. But also, if that's the way you're looking at it, basically nothing exists. But I think the purpose of saying that these categories aren't really real is reminding people that there is a difference between the way we describe things and the way they are. That, like, language is inherently less rich than reality. Right. But at the same time, we're not going to actually not need the oh, yeah. word fish. We still need language. Yeah. Yes. But if we can do this at the same time, recognize yes. the limits of these categories while still acknowledging their importance in our language and in our ability to communicate with each other. I think that that is a more interesting discussion than whether or not Pluto should be a planet. Right, but it's not as but it's not as sticky. It doesn't get people as excited. I know. I know they want to fight for the thing that they had and Pluto is a great name for a planet. Did you know, John, that um that there are three planets that have elements named after them. Actually four, but you have to be really weird to get the fourth. Mercury. Oh yeah, you're right, there's five. That was my first one. <laughs> I, I, that one That one seemed like a slam dunk. <laughs> yeah, that was an early one. Um, uranium. Yep. Plutonium, uh -huh. if you count Pluto. So what's between Uranus and Pluto? Neptunium. That's right, and they are actually all in a line. Uranium, Neptunium, and Plutonium. One thing about Hank is that even if you've seen the TikTok, you still have to let him finish. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's one other. Uh huh. And I'm not going to tell it to you. Oh, that's. I want to see it in the comments. That's the business. Because it's, it's a tricky one. We're trying to drive engagement. <laughs> <laughs> Let's end with a call to action, Hank, like any good YouTuber would. It's the last day of Pizzamas. Pizzamas.com. Pizza doesn't exist, but Pizzamas does. Oh, there you go. Uh, he is wearing a Pizza, pizza oh, Miss shirt. Right. He just hasn't. <laughs> he just put, he hid it away the whole time. This Thanks. was a trick. I wanted to make an educational video so that we could just have a long ass last day of Pizza Miss video where we chatted in a tree. Yes. John, I will continue to see you all weekend. Thanks so much for having me over. And indeed, the only reason we'll continue to see each other is because of this light. This the light. visible sign of the invisible vision. Light. <laughs> it's a cliche, but you're no T.S. Eliot. <laughs> um, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you're no T.S. Eliot. Light. The visible reminder of the invisible Visible. What is it? Nothing. What's go, the quote? Go Google it. As T.S. Eliot wrote, uh, great poetry uh, needn't be understood to communicate. Did he? Something like that. <laughs> John's phone just fell out of the tree. Oh house. no! It's fine, it's soft down there. Let's go find out. I'm gonna drop the rug down though. That's for sure. Rug's just going off the side. <laughs> Get your pizza, Miss Rug. I think that they're on sale. There's a discount. You could just hide them in the forest. Just hide them in the forest. How is it? Uninjured. All right. Not bad. I, I was I was certain it would be fine. Yeah, it's uh, unlocked, and I immediately saw Kanye West's uh, screenshots from Instagram. That's so probably not. Probably avoid that. It's working.